from the studios of Foxborough Cable Access, located in the center of Foxborough, Massachusetts, you are watching Around Foxborough. Hello and welcome to Around Foxborough, the show where we talk to the people and learn about the places and things that make Foxborough the gem of Norfolk County. My name is Mark Rivard and I'm pleased to have as my guest today, Mike Davison. Welcome, Hi. Mike. Hi, welcome. How are you doing, Mark? Good, thank you. And uh, maybe I should say Air Force Lieutenant Colonel retired Mike Davison. Yeah, it's funny. Almost no one refers to me as that anymore. I don't even go by it. It's every once in a while I get it. It's like, who, who's this guy? But, <laughs> you know, I just go by Mike now. No, well, I wanted to let everybody know and thank you for your service as well. I appreciate that. So what are we going to talk about today? Because you, you, we've got some great stuff on the table here. And well, what we're going to talk about is um, mostly we're going to discuss my wood carving and, and some of the stuff I do. Um, for, not only for the community, but for private individuals, and 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 um, you know some of the stuff I sell, um, and also again some of the stuff for the community, like the little bird, and we'll discuss that in a little bit. So that's what we're primarily going to discuss today. Okay, oh, well, let's get started. So, how did you get into this? How, how how did you become, you know, making all these great great items? <sighs> Funny story. Um, I spent most of my professional career flight testing airplanes. Okay, and I, I do that now, and I did it then. And when I was at, at Edwards Air Force Base after I went through the Air Force Test Pilot School, um, what I wanted to do is, is start working on something that was a little bit more holistic. And so I started to build wooden boats. And so I took some courses, built some wooden boats, uh, did some wood carving at the wooden boat school. They taught me how to make half models. And I did that for about 20 years, making ship, ship half models, ship models, and wooden boats. And then I just wanted to expand um, the craft. You know, I mean, I. Did some furniture building when I was stationed in Ohio because they had a really good um, adult education place with a really nice shop. So I did some furniture building, started building my skills there. And then, you know, after a while, frankly, I just, there's two things. I sort of got bored and I also was like, oh, yeah, I think I can do that. I think it'd be fun and interesting. So like, for example, I started carving spoons, which you can see here. And then what I discovered with, when I started carving spoons is that they made really wonderful gifts and really a way to connect with other people because you know we're all connected by food and so you start giving them out and they became these really treasured items amongst my friends and then I started to slowly sell them and then after a while um, with the, the marine animals I just get I really like the marine concepts mm -hmm. the the water and the flow and then what I wanted to do is I started to uh, start to span into animals because you can put more life into the animal than you can into a boat. Right. So that's really how it started. That's great. That's great. And I, I love the spoons. I mean, that's, those are the old fashioned wooden spoons. Those are the ones that my mom used to hit me with. No, no, she didn't. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, the, the ironic thing is everyone makes that joke. Um, it's, <laughs> the, it's the funniest thing. But I, th you, I thought it was an original. I guess not. But, but if, you really, <laughs> if you really pick up the wooden spoon and you hold it, I mean, you see they're very light. They're very, very strong, light. but they're very light. I mean, most yeah. people, when they picture the wooden spoon for the old spanking, it's a much bigger thing. But you know what I try to do is add lightness and 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 a uh, utility to the spoon as well as trying to bring out the the beauty of the wood. Yeah, no, it's very it's very nice, very light, very light, very easy to stir. Yeah, taste the sauce. Yeah, and these are just I mean awesome. these are some of the spoons I had. Then it's some of the different you know varieties I had. And after a while, honestly, I got tired of building just regular wooden spoons, so I uh, carved, this is the one I kept for myself. Oh, nice. A dragon head spoon. So, oh, wow. You know, I can, many dragon jokes when I'm stirring the rice. <laughs> so. When you're making your meal for Game of Thrones, which is not on the air anymore, but, you know. Yeah, you know, I mean, that or, you know, I think of Viking attacks coming, so. This is true. You know, so. So what else do we have? What's, I like the little bird. Oh, uh, the little birds. Those are known as comfort birds. Um, funny thing about those birds, I've, I've carved and made a lot of things, and as you know from the introduction we were discussing before the show, that one of the bigger things I've carved for this town was the town seal. Yes. And I'm in the process of carving a second town seal. I'm laying it out right now. But those birds, by far, have the most impact of anything I've ever made. Really? Yeah, and I've made over about 100 of them. Most of them, the vast balance, have gone to the veterans in town. Well, that's awesome. Okay. 
that I've made them for, they're generally made for comfort birds. And what you're supposed to do is not only look at them, but they're made to be held to and help. rubbed. Um, I've made them for people who've lost loved ones tragically. I've made them for cancer patients. About 40 of them have gone to the veterans in town, uh, people who suffer trauma. I was a little surprised that the veterans took to them, but you know, you, even now there's a bunch with the veteran service officer. And um, when I teach, I'm gonna teach a class, uh, wood carving merit badge to boys in troop seven, they're gonna carve that. And those birds are gonna go to the veterans. You know, so, so when a veteran comes in, her veteran spouse and they need having a bad day, they can have, have a bird. By far the biggest impact of anything I've ever made. That's great. The biggest impact, such a small little yeah. item has such a big impact. Yeah, and, and it takes me about two hours to make. I mean, so they're not, it's not a thing that it takes a lot of time. Um, you know, when I go traveling for business, you know, I can carve those, I carve those and I carve spoons, you know, cause something like this obviously is gonna break if I, you know, take it with me because it's fragile, but I can, I can just carve those and I can teach people how to carve the little birds. And the impact they have is, is really not proportional to their size. I mean, literally there are people, I've literally had people walk up to me in town saying, here, this is the bird you made me. Wow. So, and again, most of them, they've made somewhere around 100, about 40% have gone to the veterans in town. That's excellent. So. And by the way, um, as Mike mentioned, if you go to town hall and go into the meeting room, that beautiful town seal that's on the wall, Mike is the one who made that. So check it out next time you're in town hall. That is beautiful. Yeah, there's a funny story behind that. Um, <clears throat> so I'm in Gettysburg with my little boy, and uh, I get a phone call from Mike Johns, who was the veteran service officer at the time. He's like, hey, Mike, do you think you cover a town seal? And I'm like, yeah, sure, I can do it. I'd never done anything that big. And I figured there'd be a big interview process. And I walked in with a, a piece I had done on a whale and, and I said, is this it? And he said, yeah, sure, you can. I said, yeah, you're hired. And then um, I spent the next 10, 10 months doing that. And uh, you know, the, it's really kind of been kind of amazing. It's an amazing process. And, and that, you know, I've seen it become the centerpiece of the town hall. And now again, I'm starting another one for the, uh, I, I didn't bring it because you know, Bill Keegan doesn't, didn't want me to show it until it's completed, but I'm starting to lay out the second one for the, uh, up by the uh, town manager's office. That's great. So. So this is a great piece too, the shark. I mean, you carved the shark by hand as well? Yeah, everything, everything the, the shark was carved completely by hand. Um, you know, obviously I added the fins because that gets really tough to do, but the, everything from the nose to the tail um, was done by uh, done by hand, and if you can see, you really can't see on the top here. But if you can, I don't know, pull it out. And I'll just do it this way. You can see there's a basically a serpentine to the tail. Yeah. And you know, so I wanted to capture the flow of the the animal when you do it. Um, you know, because animals aren't static. They're obviously moving, sharks are obviously moving, and there's a flow to the animal in and of itself, which I like to try to capture. And with the Thrasher shark, because it has the tail, there's the length of the body, it's a really interesting piece to do. So I, I started working on, on, you know, I started, um, I did a, a sperm whale first, and then I did a pair of dolphins, which intertwined for a wedding gift for a, a friend of mine, and then uh, I did some sharks, and this is one of the, this is my latest shark project. It's very nice. Thank you. I like the detail on the coral too. Actually, that was kind of funny. This this is just a this is just a piece of burl I picked up at Woodcraft. Oh, really? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it was just I just walked in and said, "What am I going to do?" And it's like, "Oh, look, this this." I literally drilled a hole and stuck the little thing in it, and boom, I was done. Wow. Yeah. Well, you didn't have to tell them that. I could have said, you know, well, yeah, I carved on. No, <laughs> no, no I, 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 you know, there's that, a certain amount of It does honesty. look like car coral, though. The, it yeah. really does. It looks like a reef. Yeah, well, that's, that's the, the thing is you try to pick the piece that sort of matches with the animal. And, you know, it really, it came out really nice. And I just, I just literally looked at it and said, oh, there we go. And I, like I said, the only thing that happened is I drilled that little hole and we're done. So how long does it take you to do something like this, like this shark? Oh, it depends. Um, I think this one took me 
I think the hammerhead took me uh, three months. This one took a lot longer because of the tail. Uh, the intricacies of the tail is I had to, you know, as you thinned out the tail, obviously you lose structure and you lose strength. And so you had to sit there and, and thin it out in a way to do it. And it was mostly done, believe it or not, um, a lot of the sanding was done with emery boards. So, you know, what I did is I go to CVS, buy a bunch of emery boards and sand there. So, you know, it's, it's pretty funny when, you know, six foot five inch man is walking through the <laughs> beauty section looking for emery boards. You know, oh, these will work just fine. I think I'll buy a bottle of nail polish just to make it look legit. Is that what I'm <laughs> yeah, Well, you know. <laughs> But, uh, but no, and it's, it's one of the things I've learned when, you know, the various people I've done crafts with and done, you know, I mean, when I, you know, as I said, I've done ship models for years and, you know, talking to the guys at the Constitution Ship Models Group, they're, they're like, you know, uh, you know, I remember one guy put together this intricate Civil War ship and, you know, had the, you know, had a balloon on it, or the, you know, hot air balloon. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, the balloon was formed out of a, a leg, those legs, egg, little eggs that you know, the nylons came in and that's what people do. I mean, yeah. that's what craftsmen do. That's like, hey, if it works, I'm gonna use it. I've made a few uh, parade floats in my time and you wouldn't believe some of the items we use to make it look like yeah. something totally different because yeah. you use whatever you can. <coughs> and if nobody knows what it is, you've yeah, done your exa job. Exactly, yeah. And it's, you know, so it's just funny, but I have no shame when I do it. <laughs> now you've made some other nice, I know we couldn't, you couldn't bring them all in because this table would be loaded, but we do have some pictures that we can show people at home. Yeah. Like for example, the cribbage board you made. Yeah, uh, I, I got a commission uh, to do a cribbage board and my client wanted it round and he wanted a Celtic knot in the middle. Um, so what I did is, is, you know, I obviously made it round. The hard part was actually making the little holes even around the edge. Very important. Um, yeah. I had to make a little template and do that, and then you know I carved the the Celtic knot in the middle, and you know what I did with that. And if you see in the picture, you can see that the Celtic knot weaves in and out in and out of itself, and that's I try to do that when I have those kind of those kind of items. And you can also see that you know when you go on to the there's a, I did a Welsh low spoon, and you can see that the the you know, when it branches out, it, it weaves in, into each other. And you, you try to keep that in so it becomes a, a, a three-dimensional object. And do you do a lot of custom things for people or? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, you know, I made everything from jewelry boxes, you know, there's a book stand I made. And that book stand, by the way, is based on a 15th, 16th century design that was brought over by the pilgrims. And what it does is, if you, you can't see it here, but if you look, if well, you look, we'll, we'll, put on, we'll put it on the screen. But yeah, if we'll you look in the picture, home. okay, what it has is, is, is two, two rails, and, they, re and they, they freely rotate, and there's a one with a stick on it, and the other one with a little like ladder, and you just put it there so you can adjust it, and that's all it is. You know? And again, I based that on a picture I saw uh, of a design that was, came over with a, the Mayflower. So, you know, obviously the, the man who, who, who showed that design is much better. The man who I, I basically got the inspiration from built the furniture, used to build the furniture at Plymouth Plantation. But, wow. you know, and it was more intricately carved, but mine was very simple. But it's, you know, it's, it's really, I like that lineage. Excellent. What about the um, Eagle Claw pipe? Ah, pipes. <laughs> Funny, <sure>. The funniest <laughs> thing is I got a call one day from all people, my nephew, who's a, a former Marine infantryman, and he was like, hey, can you make me a Bilbo Baggins pipe? And I'm like, sure, I can make a Bilbo <laughs> Baggins pipe. Never done it before. So I figured out how to make it. I, you know, looked on YouTube, that kind of thing. Called, you know, did some research on the internet for pipe making supplies to make sure you use the right stuff, because obviously it's wood, and wood burns, so you got to make sure you use the right wood that these in the day. And so I... I carved it, made it, and then I had another client say, I post on Facebook, and another client was like, well, I really like this, can I have one too? And to the local client in town, I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll make one for you. And then a third client came by and was like, okay, you know, I've seen you make pipes, you know, I have this, you know, I was, a, I was an iron worker, I was a fireman, I have this, you know, symbol that's meaning to me, can you make a pipe out of that? And I said, so I did. 
Now the Eagle Claw pipe, what that was and what I didn't show you was there's, I found online from Gettysburg, a bowl, a pipe bowl that dates from the American Civil War. That's the form of an Eagle Claw, mm -hmm. okay? And so that was my attempt to duplicate it for my own personal use. And obviously I'm not gonna smoke a pipe from the American Civil War, you know, it's a valuable piece of history, you know, that I got, a piece of woodworking, piece of Americana, and, you know, but I wanted to have something that was sort of, sort of um, similar to that, just to show, also to show my clients that, you know, look, hey, pipe making is one of the things I, I do. Wow, that's incredible. It just, it just sort of happened. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the, which is the funny thing is a lot of my woodworking just sort of happened. Just sort of happened? Yeah. So um, if you had to, what's the biggest thing you made? I know this, the seal is pretty big and the furniture, but what's, what's probably the biggest thing you carved? I've carved? Yeah. It was the town seal. It was the town yeah. seal? Biggest thing I've made was a 17-foot was a wooden boat, but uh, um, the biggest thing I've carved was the town seal. Oh. The town hall, yeah. And now you have to make another one. Yeah, it's smaller. It's a it's, smaller a, it's, 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 a, it's a two and a half foot diameter versus the other okay. one, which is three and a half foot diameter. Okay. Yeah, the, the, uh, this one, the one I'm making can fit in the back of my car, the other one couldn't. No. <laughs> yeah, so. Still going to be a lot of work, though. Yeah, it is. Um, I do it all by hand. I do not use power tools. Um, you know, with some power tools, you, you can use, I use occasionally a power tool. Like if I have a really, really dense wood and I have to curve out the bowl, mm -hmm. I'll start with that. But I do most of my work with hand, most of my work with hand tools. I did the entire town seal. You know, I mean, I obviously cut it with a, a real, real saw, you know, the mechanical uh, power saw, and you know, I used a couple power sanders, but all the rest was done carved by hand, using hand tools. Wow. Much better control. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and, and look, you know, if you're, nine months into a 10 month process, and you, you know, do something wrong, and it's, that's nine months of work, it's gone out the drive. Start all over again, and yeah. You know, and that was, a, I think the town seal, I think that one was, just the little one was $300. So, you know, I mean, right now, the, the town, the, the one I have in, in the house that I'm working on, I think that the, the wood alone is $225. And that's, that's a, a foot diameter or less. Wow. So you're talking a pretty big investment of wood and time, you know, and, and with the town seals and with most of my work, I don't get paid up front. You know, I make sure my client's happy and they're, they they get what they want. And I always include them in the process of when I'm building it. Okay, I post on Facebook, I send them pictures, this is what you want, you know, because, you know, I'm doing something for a client and whether that client be the private individual or, you know, in this case, the town of Foxborough is represented by the town manager. I mean, you, you have to do that. Now, of course, with the town seal is the added impetus is, you know, it's a symbol of the town. Okay. So you just can't, you know, this is, it was really funny. It was a very much a collaborative effort, in my opinion, even though I did the carving by myself, you know. Obviously, Jack Othelet was involved, you know. When I get the other town seal laid out, I'm going to have Jack, I'm going to, make sure Jack and the town manager and the assistant town manager and anyone else who wants to make sure, you know, that they're happy with what they're seeing, you know, keep them informed, you know, because it's, it's, it's gonna probably outlast me. Yeah, and, all, and it's not like you have a company where you have a bunch of people working and they can, you know, spit these out. This is all you and this is all on you. This is your pride in your work. Yeah. And you want to make sure you're giving everybody exactly what they want. Yeah, well, it's, it's that. And, you know, I mean, this is something that, you know, is going to represent the town, hopefully for years to come. Right. You know, and the, of course, the funny thing is that the old town sale from the old town hall is sitting in my shop. And when I figure out how to fix that, I'm going to get that back up and running, too. Nice. So. So if, if anybody wanted to commission you to make something, how would they get in touch with you? Um, two ways. Uh, I have a f Facebook. There's a there's a I have a Facebook page. The business is called Spoons by Harry's Dad. Mm -hmm. Harry obviously being my son, and I being his dad. But um, if you look on Facebook, you know Spoons by Harry's Dad. You go on Facebook, 
you know, Mike Davison, or um, you can email me at Davison, D-A-V-I-S-O-N-M-I-K, at AOL.com. Any of those ways, you know, if you want to um, get a hold of me, it'd be the best way to do it. I have to forewarn you, right now I'm really backed up. I would imagine. You know, Town <laughs> Seal, seal. Town seal is, is my priority right now, and I want to get that done. So, I'm sure down the road people will be starting to think of Christmas. I know we just had it, but people will start thinking about Christmas presents. People do. Um, Christmas, for me, uh, the joke the joke in the house is, you know, we'll say and make Christmas gifts ain't going to make themselves. <laughs> <coughs> um, so what happens is Christmas usually starts around mid-August. Start the party for Christmas around mid-August. Um, I try to have a, a, a bunch of spoons available. Um, the nice part is, is I found some more different spoon designs. I'm going to expand that. Start to do more carving in my spoons, you know, kind of like the uh, dragon. Or, you know, I did a spoon, I did a sun, you know, did some painting on that. Uh, I've been asked to carve symbols into my spoons. Do some of that um, just to, you know, personalize the gift. Um, but if it's a really long lead item, you know, I, I need, you know, honestly, it's like, you know, I made a jewelry box over the summer for a private client and that that took three or four months you know I, you know and then part of it is um it takes three or four months and part of it is i have a day job so and you know what 12 year old boy yeah that can keep you busy so enough as it is yeah so excellent so well, I really appreciate having, um, appreciate you coming in today, Mike. You know, this is this is awesome. No, I, I appreciate it. Um, appreciate showing off my work. Hopefully, uh, you know, your viewers aren't bored. But no, no, no. This is great stuff. And you know, now when they walk into town hall, they walk into that meeting room, see that seal. That's incredible. Yeah. I didn't know who made it, and now I do. Yeah, and it was an ama it's amazing thing because you know the funny thing about that seal was that when I made the the cribbage board, I made it for a person I know. He actually, he was one of the first recipients, veteran recipients of my birds. And, um, and he asked me for it, and I said, you know, and I told him, I said, you know, I made the town seal. And he was like, I didn't know that. So, you know, all of a sudden they, you know, realized that, you know, there's this whole interconnection. Yes, it's, it's nice. I really, really like it. So. Well, excellent. Well, thanks again for coming in. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate and, uh, it. We'll be looking forward to seeing more of your work around town. Yeah, I'm hoping that, you know, I mean, hoping that, you know, maybe they can do more displays or, you know, I can get back into the, you know, the JCs have their little spring and fall sales. I can join that. I did the fall sale last year. I won't be able to do the spring sale this year. I don't think I can do the spring sale this year. I don't think a lot of material. Um, I'll try, but, you know, again, town sale, you know, but if I go on the road a lot, maybe we'll carve some more spoons. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. And this was Around Foxborough. My name is Mark Rivard. Have yourself a great day.